Welcome to the 20 minute pump. We're going to pump together. And while we pump, I'm gonna to talk to you about storage capacity and your pumping magic number. So let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you have all your flanges on and are ready to go. I'm gonna be using the spectra today and I'll be calling out when to switch between your settings to help you pump more milk while we're talking. So go ahead and turn your pump on. If you have a spectra, make sure you're starting in that 70 cycle. That is your quick stimulation phase. When you're using any breast pump, regardless of if you're using the spectra, a Medela, a Baby Buddha, a Willow, and LV, there should be two modes on that pump. One is the stimulation mode, which is the very quick pulse. It should be nice and light. You want a light vacuum on that. And the second phase is the expression mode. It's a deeper, longer, slower pull where you should be able to have a little more vacuum. So with any pump session, you want to start for one to two minutes on that stimulation mode to help your body trigger a letdown. Once you start to see your milk flow, then you'll switch it over into that expression mode to help move that milk. During this 20 minute pump session, we'll be alternating back and forth between that stimulation and expression mode several times. So be ready when I hear, when you hear me say, switch to the other cycle. So in any given pump session, I usually recommend one to two minutes of the stimulation phase, followed by four to six minutes of pumping on the expression phase. There is a window um, or a range of when you should be switching those cycles, depending on your body. Some people find that they trigger milk better when they stay in that stimulation mode for longer. And some people find that they empty more milk better when they stay in the expression mode longer. The most important part is to be alternating back and forth between the two to help your body try to trigger more letdowns. You're trying to make your pump mimic the baby. So we're just about almost ready to come out of that first stimulation cycle. So we've got just a few more seconds. And then when we transition over, we'll start talking about our topic today, which is your breast storage capacity and your magic number. So get ready. We're just about at the two minute mark of pumping and we're gonna switch to that expression mode. Okay, go ahead and put your pump. If you're on a spectra, you wanna be on the 54 cycle with that vacuum comfortable. If you have a Medela pump, it should have automatically switched from stimulation to expression. Now, when we talk about breast storage capacity, this is how much milk your physical body can hold at any given time and still feel comfortable. An empty breast actually makes milk faster than a full breast. When you have a full breast, your body says, oh, there's no more space to hold this milk, make milk slower. Every person's body has a different um, capacity to how much it can hold before your body triggers to slow milk production. Um, this is not the same as the size of your breast. You can have a very small breast and have the same storage capacity as someone with a larger breast. Your milk is made at the back of the breast and that is also where your milk is stored. Um, now everyone's storage capacity is unique and individual to that person. And it does play a factor in how many times a day you need to pump or remove milk. So I'm gonna give you some visual references. This would, these are one ounce medicine cups. I expect most people to be able to make two to four ounces every two to three hours in place of breastfeeding. That's combined between both breasts. Some people will have a storage capacity of one ounce per breast. They can pump one ounce on here and one ounce on here. That's a two ounce storage capacity. When people can make about two ounces, um, or hold two ounces at a time before feeling uncomfortable, they usually need to empty about 12 times a day in order to make enough milk for their baby. Their body can make plenty of milk, but it needs to be emptied more often in order to keep up with the baby. These are two ounce shot glasses. So some people, I find the majority of people actually have about four ounce storage capacities. So it may be two ounces on one side and one ounce on the other. It may be two and two, but the majority of people will have anywhere from, be making anywhere from two to four ounces every two to four hours. So this would be your storage capacity. This is a very normal storage capacity, very common to see. 
there are some people that have a very large storage capacity where they could make and hold anywhere from three to five or six ounces on each side. This would be a very large or a robust supply and is not as common as somebody who can make and hold two to four ounces at a time. It can happen, but it is not quite as common. So these people can go longer between feedings and not feel as uncomfortable. They have more milk in the breast at any given time. So their baby can do maybe one side per feeding or one side and a little bit per feeding. And they don't um, see their milk supply drop as fast as someone with a smaller storage capacity. Because this breast can physically hold more, the signal does not go to the brain to slow milk production as quickly as someone who can hold less. So um, if you have a one ounce storage capacity, you need to be really routinely emptying those breasts just about every two, two and a half hours to make enough milk for your baby and to not feel uncomfortable or lose supply. Whereas if you have a two to four ounce storage capacity, you could be moving your milk every two, three, four, maybe five hours, still be comfortable and still make plenty of milk for your baby. Whereas if you have a large storage capacity, you may only need to empty every four, five, or six hours, still be able to maintain your supply and not run the risk of your supply dropping to your baby. So every breast is a little different. All right, now we've been pumping for just over four minutes. So let's go back into that stimulation mode. So on your pump, go back to the quick stimulation. We're going to stimulate for another about a minute and a half, two minutes to hopefully trigger another letdown. So why does your storage capacity matter? Well, this plays a role in your magic number. So Nancy Moorbacher was a lactation consultant that coined the term magic number. The magic number is how many times in 24 hours you need to empty and move milk in order to maintain supply, increase supply, or decrease supply. So based on your unique storage capacity, that will give you a magic number for how many times you need to move milk. So let's say you have a small storage capacity. You can hold about two ounces at a time um, before your body says slow milk production or decrease production. When you have are making about two ounces, you want to be emptying about every two hours or 12 times a day to maintain your milk storage or your milk supply. If you want to increase your milk supply, you would need to be feeding or pumping more than 12 times a day. And to decrease supply, you would be cutting your that number and you would see your supply go down. So if you have a medium storage capacity, which is what I would consider average. These make two to four ounces, um, just about every two to three hours. Most of the time, the magic number for these people is somewhere between seven and nine. Okay, everybody, now time to change your cycle. Go back to that expression mode. So most people need to be moving milk seven to nine times a day in order to maintain a full milk supply. With a storage capacity of somewhere between two to four ounces combined, so two ounces on one side, maybe one ounce on the other, or two and two, or three and one, um, these bodies typically need, their magic number is seven to nine. They need to pump or feed seven to nine times a day to maintain supply. If they wanted to increase supply, they would need to go up. And to see a decrease in supply, anytime you cut back on a pump session, you'll see that supply dwindle. Okay. With the large storage capacity, the magic number can be anywhere from four to seven. So you can move milk much less often and still maintain milk supply. I've occasionally seen people that have very robust supplies that can cut down to three or four pumps a day and still maintain supply. That is very rare, but it does actually happen. Um, but with these storage capacities, these are the people that can sleep longer overnight and not have to get up to pump. These are the people that their babies can sleep longer at night um, and they don't have to worry about losing their milk supply. These are the families that the baby also may only want one breast per feeding for a very long time. They may only ever feed one breast per feeding because their unique body has the storage capacity to hold so much more milk. 
So when you're trying to figure out how many times a day you need to be pumping, knowing your storage capacity can be very helpful. So that's about how much you usually pump in any given session. That will usually tell you about how many times you need to pump in 24 hours to maintain supply. Because most babies from one month to 12 months will take 25 ounces a day. That's what most breast milk fed babies will average. They may take as little as 20 ounces or as much as 32 ounces, but most sit right in the middle of around 25 ounces a day. So, and that's divided by the number of feedings they're doing. So if you have a two to four ounce storage capacity, two times, um, two times, sorry, my brain. <laughs> so when you have um, the smaller storage capacity, if your baby's doing eight feedings a day, they're probably getting around three ounces of feeding. Um, so this storage capacity is usually, again, their babies are going to feed somewhere between seven to 10, 11 times in 24 hours. Whereas if you have a smaller storage capacity, these babies are going to be feeding 12, 13, maybe 14 times a day. Um, so much more often, much more frequently. Whereas these babies may be feeding much less often. Um, now, the biggest frustration that I see is when there is a mismatch between the storage capacity and what the baby wants. This usually happens or plays a role when there's been supplementation. So again, most people are gonna make two to four ounces, but if baby has been getting five or six ounce bottles, that's where there's a mismatch of what the body is making compared to what the baby is now used to. So when you are away from your baby, make sure your baby's not being overfed by a well-meaning caregiver. We're trying to match those bottles to what your body's able to do. All right, we're coming up on the next time. We're gonna switch one more time. We're gonna go back into a stimulation mode one more time in this pump session. Before we finish, gonna try to trigger one more letdown. So in about 10 seconds, we're gonna switch again. So get ready on your pump, find your, find your pump button to be able to switch. And there we go, go ahead and switch into your stimulation mode. So we're gonna to try to trigger a letdown one more time. Some people find that they may need to change the vacuum at this stage. You might need a little stronger vacuum or you might need a little gentler vacuum. Um, we're also gonna take a second to use our hands. So take just a moment with me and come do some gentle hands-on compression while you're in the stimulation cycle. This is gonna help trigger another letdown. So you're just gonna gently take your fingers like a comb and you're just gonna do some gentle raking down the breast. There we go. And we're just gonna do some gentle compression from behind and from the top. Take your fingers around those pump flanges and we're just gonna gently massage with our thumbs, trying to trigger one more letdown in this pump cycle. There you go. All right. And now let's take a nice deep breath together and let it all out, okay? We're gonna let it stimulate for just another couple more seconds to try to trigger another letdown. If you have already started to see more flow, you can switch over to the expression mode. If you haven't seen and that flow start to go again, you can leave it on just a little bit longer. We're gonna go about 10 more seconds in this, in this stimulation mode. All right, let's go ahead and switch over, go back to that expression mode. So this is the last time we're gonna switch in this pump session. There we go. So let's talk about that storage capacity again as related to pumping and feeding overnight. If your baby is naturally sleeping longer overnight on their own with no sleep training, no protocols, no pacifiers trying to get them to sleep longer, um, not using a snoo or some kind of device like that, um, that actually does what it's marketed to do to get them to sleep longer. Most of the time, if your baby's naturally sleeping longer on their own at night, it's because you have a large enough breast storage capacity that they are getting all of the calories they need during their feedings. So if your baby's naturally sleeping longer overnight, there's usually nothing that you need to do. You do not need to get up and pump. You do not need to get up and try to dream feed the baby if they're sleeping on their own. 
If you have decided to sleep train, if you're using some kind of device and baby is sleeping longer than they naturally would, and you're concerned about your milk supply, then yes, you can always get up and pump. And that can be determined by your magic number. Again, you're looking at about how much you can move every two to three hours. That's kind of the gold standard of how much volume are you able to pump every two to three hours. And that gives you kind of an estimate of how many times in 24 hours you need to be moving that milk. So if you normally pump two to four ounces, which is a normal supply, you usually need to be moving milk somewhere between seven to nine times in 24 hours. So if your baby is only feeding six times because they're sleeping through, then you most likely will want to get up and pump once or twice overnight to maintain your supply. If you have a large storage capacity and your baby is sleeping through, um, you might be able to get away with either doing one pump before you go to bed, or if you wake up in the middle of the night and feel uncomfortable, you can always move just enough milk to feel comfortable and still maintain your supply. If you have a small storage capacity, you will definitely want to be getting up in the middle of the night and pumping in order to preserve your supply to make sure that you're hitting that magic number to maintain your supply. We are coming into the, we are now in the 16 minute mark. So if you only pump for 15 minutes, this is the end of the pump session for you. And if you're gonna go to 20, you are almost there. We only have about four minutes left in our pump session. Um, so hopefully that was helpful to describe the differences in um, the magic number and in your breast storage capacity. Do you know that your breasts are sisters and not twins? So they can actually have different storage capacities on each side. 70% of us make more on the right breast and 30% of us make more on the left, but it, most people will make more on the right and often double. So it's not uncommon to see right side make more than the left side, and it could be to any level. You might have a very large storage capacity on the right and a very small storage capacity on the left. You may have a large or a medium size on the left and a small on the right or vice versa. There's lots of combinations um, for storage capacity. Just like the breasts are different sizes, the nipples can be different sizes and shapes. It's not uncommon to see that. The other thing to remember is breastfeeding hormones are highest between 2 and 6 a.m. So most people will see their fullest volume of milk at that 6 to 9 a.m. pump session. It's a higher water concentration milk to rehydrate your baby for the day. And it's also very common to see a significantly smaller supply in the afternoon and evening. It's a higher fat concentration, less water to help your baby sleep and grow so that they don't poop overnight. So expect to see your fullest volume first thing in the morning. And then as you get into the afternoon to see less milk and in the evening, even less milk. So if you're seeing a drastic drop where you're pumping four or five ounces in the morning, two or three in the afternoon and only one ounce in the evening, consider doing some cluster pumping in those evening hours. So instead of spacing it out every three hours by the clock all day, every 24 hours, consider doing every three hours during the day and every one, one and a half or two in the evening when your supply is naturally lower. This takes advantage again of the faster you empty the breast, the emptier the breast, the faster milk is made. So if you're concerned about afternoon and evening supply, doing shorter, more frequent pump sessions will take advantage of your unique breast storage capacity to help you hit your magic number. You don't necessarily need to do a full power pump where you're pumping on and off for an hour, but doing five minute pumps every hour would mimic more like the cluster feeding of the baby to help you hit that magic number. All right, we're down to the last minute. I hope you've enjoyed this session of pumping with me. I hope you learned something new about your storage capacity and your magic number. And hopefully that will help you understand your unique body that is different than everyone else's body to help get you a better pump session to be able to make more milk for your baby. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at lactation at gmail.com or find me on Instagram at lactation for more pumping tips and tricks. You can also find my recorded class called Pumped from my website 
It's over an hour of content of all of my best tips and tricks and strategies for maximizing your pump session, from how to find a quality pump, find the right size flange for your pump, and create pumping schedules to help reach your pumping goals. Now we're just about out of time. I hope you enjoyed that pump session and we'll see you next time on the next time we pump together. Happy pumping. And you are five more seconds. You've got this and you are done. Thanks for pumping with me.